earth when he comes the second time. It says he comes in the clouds, and we're caught up there to meet him in the clouds. Now, let's ask another question. We find out what happens to those who are sleeping in Christ, the righteous dead. What about the righteous living here on the earth at that time? Read verse 17 now, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so the living are translated in that moment of time. Their bodies are instantaneously changed in the twinkling of an eye. They're given the same glorious immortality that those received who came up out of their graves. And together, all the saints ascend into the cloud to meet Jesus. He does not come to the earth and touch the earth. We go up there to meet him. Now, while we're still talking about the righteous, and before we get on to the question of the wicked, let me ask this question. Where do they go after they're caught up to meet him in the clouds? I know not long ago I heard a preacher say, well, they go up there into the cloud to meet Jesus, and then they go over there, they're transported over on the other side of the hill somewhere, and they're brought back down to the earth again. No, friends, this is not what the Bible says at all. Let me tell you where they're going. Jesus told us where they'd be going at that time. When he went away, just before he went away, in John chapter 14, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Listen, friends, Jesus went to his Father's house where the mansions were, and he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you there and then I'll get you and take you to be with me where I am. And so now when the righteous are caught up to meet him in the clouds, he takes them to that place where those mansions have been made ready. Right on up through the great open spaces of the sky, past the planets, the sun, the moon, the stars, to the third heaven, the paradise of God, where the throne of God is located. And that is where the righteous will go when Jesus comes to receive them as they're caught up to meet him. But now, let's think of the wicked. What happens to them? What about the wicked who are in their graves at the time Christ returns? What happens to them? All right, now we read it just a moment ago in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 5. Remember, it said, But the rest of the dead live not again until when? Until the thousand years were finished. And so the rest of the dead, the wicked, who are sleeping in their graves when Jesus comes, they remain there, sleeping right on through the thousand years. They do not come up at that time at all because we're told clearly that they do not rise. They will not be brought to life until the end of the thousand years. So, friends, that explains it for the righteous. It explains it for the wicked dead. Now we have one more group to think about, and that is the wicked who are living here on the face of the earth. What happens to the living who will see Jesus come in the clouds? Let's come now to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 1, and I'm beginning to read with verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints. Now, this says that when Jesus comes to get his people and to glorify and immortalize his saints, at the same time, the wicked people are slain by the brightness of his coming. You see, friends, sin can't exist in the presence of God. His infinite holiness is such, his purity is such that sin cannot survive in his presence. And so the wicked people are afraid of him. You know what the Bible said. They run and, and cry out to the rocks and mountains and try to hide themselves in the caves of the earth so that they will not have to face him. In fact, in Revelation 6 and verse 14, it tells us of their reaction to this uh, revelation of Jesus and the clouds of heaven. In verse 14 of Revelation 6, it says, And the heavens departed as a scroll when it had rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains, 
and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Don't you see, friends, how they're not ready? They're afraid, they're ashamed, and they try to, to get out of sight of this glory of the coming of Jesus. And they, they cannot live in that presence. Our God is a consuming fire, the Bible says. For those who are unprepared, who are unspiritual, who are unconverted, who do not have the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives, they cannot live in the presence of God. And so they're slain by the brightness of his coming. Their bodies are scattered over this earth from one end to the other, and they're left here slain on the face of the earth. Now, do we have the picture in mind, friends? We've read the text now to make this very clear. The righteous have been caught up and taken with Jesus to the place that he made ready for them. The wicked and their graves remain there. The wicked living are slain by the glory and the brightness of his coming. What does that leave here in this earth, friends? Why, it's left empty, isn't it? It's left empty. I've had people ask me, Brother Joe, will anybody be converted in this world after Jesus comes? Have you ever heard that question asked by anyone? I can answer it without one reservation tonight, without one. No one will be saved after Jesus comes, friends. Probation will have closed at that time. Jesus, our great high priest, would have stepped out of the heavenly sanctuary above. He would have laid aside his priestly garments and put on his kingly robes, and now he comes back to execute judgment. Let's read that now in Revelation 22 and verses 11 and 12. Revelation 22, 11 and 12. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. There it is. Jesus says, I'm coming. I'm coming back. And nobody can be saved now. Let the filthy man remain that way. Let the holy man remain that way. No more changes. The last prayer has been offered and answered. There is no more blood in the heavenly sanctuary to be offered. Jesus has left the most holy place now, and no prayers can be answered. No saving can be done now. So when Jesus comes, my friends, that's it. That's the end of human probation. In fact, who is there to save? Who is there in the earth who could accept the Lord Jesus? No one is left here. The righteous have been taken away. The wicked are all dead. In fact, Jeremiah describes it over in his book of prophecy in the Old Testament. Jeremiah 25. I want you to see here the interesting way that the great Old Testament prophecy, prophet described the earth at the time Christ returns. In verse 33 of Jeremiah 25, and the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Isn't that plain? Well, he's talking about the end of the world. He's talking about this great day when Jesus comes. And he said the wicked people are scattered everywhere, and they're not gathered, they're not wept over, and they're not buried. Why are they not buried, friends? Nobody to do it, is there? Why are they not wept over? You know, surely somebody would cry for the wicked. They must have some loved ones that would be bereaved by their death. No, no, the Bible says there's no, no lamenting, no weeping, no mourning for them. Why? Nobody here. Nobody here. The earth, my friends, has been emptied of its inhabitants. In fact, Isaiah speaks of the very same event and the same time in Isaiah 24. Verse 1, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste. Look down at verse 19, The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. Verse 20, The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. Oh, friends, you know why this great convulsion of the planet is taking place? Why, the Bible says a tremendous earthquake is going to rock this earth at the time of Christ's return. The very worst that men have ever known. Nothing like it. Mexico City, nothing compared to this great earthquake. In fact, Jesus, or rather the uh, prophet John, describes it for us in Revelation chapter 16. You want to read a very dramatic description of this last moment earthquake before Christ returns. Revelation 16, verse 18, and then verse 20. And there were voices 
and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Why, friends, it's going to be so terrible, it will actually shake down the mountains. They'll explode and dissolve out there on the plain. And uh, it says that islands are going to flee away. Inhabited islands disappear right into the depth of the sea. That's how fierce this is going to be, friends. There won't be a building left on planet Earth. All the great cities, the skyscrapers, will come tumbling down into a pile of rubble and ruin according to the way the Bible describes this earthquake. And nothing will be left here but desolation. It'll be a no man's land. It'll be chaos, my friends. According to the way the Bible describes this event and the following uh, uh, things that happen to this planet. In fact, let's come now to Jeremiah chapter 4 and see a vision, read a vision that he had of this earth after Christ came. Now, you want an eyewitness report. Here it is, because the prophets received some very vivid revelations in dreams and visions of what would happen. And here's what uh, Jeremiah saw in Jeremiah 4, verse 23, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. You see, the aftershocks of the earthquake are still there in the eyes of the prophet when he sees it. And he said, I beheld, and lo, there was no man. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. You see, the Lord has come in this picture. He has actually seen there the coming of Christ. He saw the earthquake. He saw the aftershocks of it. And he said the hills were still moving lightly, and there was no man. He said, no man. Of course, the earth was empty at the presence of Christ. The earth emptied, the righteous have been taken, the wicked have been slain, and so here he sees the earth in darkness even. You talk about total blackout, that's the title of our message. Coming total blackout. A few years ago, they had a total blackout on the East Coast. Remember that? Right on up through New York City, all power went out. Elevators stopped between floors in New York City. It was all blanked out in total darkness. Some terrible things happened according to the reports that came of that. But friends, here's a time when the whole world is going to be blanked out. Not a man, not even a bird, it says. And everything lying there in utter confusion. What a picture this is of the things that are going to happen when Jesus comes, friends. And the earth emptied of its inhabitants. What a picture this is. Now, we're going on to answer some more questions. But right at this point, let's summarize a little bit of what we found so far. We found that when Jesus comes, that's the beginning of the millennium, the beginning of the thousand years. When he comes, there'll be four classes of people to deal with. That'll be the righteous living, the righteous dead, the wicked living, the wicked dead. We found that the righteous dead are going to be resurrected. They'll be giving, given new bodies, immortal, glorious bodies that can never suffer pain, never die. The righteous living will be translated in that moment in the twinkle of an eye, caught up with the resurrected saints to meet Jesus in the clouds, and they go to be with Jesus in the place that he prepared for them in the third heaven. And then the wicked people who are dead in their graves will remain there. The wicked who are living at that time will be slain by the bright glory of his presence and the earth is going to be broken down and shaken by a tremendous earthquake that will leave everything in utter ruin and chaos. And the earth will be emptied. The dead bodies of the wicked scattered from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. So this is the picture as we come to this point of the beginning of the thousand years. To LPJ Speaker Radio with, with Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Sweet Thing. And that was uh, Joe Cruz with Coming World Blackout. And uh, it is coming. It's coming. And if you're not ready, you need to get yourself ready and find Jesus. 
That's right. He uh, wants to be ready, not getting not ready. Not getting ready. You have heard the truth, the word. And the truth shall set you free. And it will set you free.